The problem in this video deals with measuring out liquid under heavy constraints of only, only having certain measuring fluid cylinders. So what you'll need is a 75 milliliter jug, a 125 milliliter jug, and a 200 milliliter jug, plus a bucket of water to, to fill them up with. Although it seems like a very easy problem, the way you can solve it are, can be through trial and error, and your students should hopefully find that quite easily. But solving it without trial and error is much more difficult, and we show you how to use graphs to uh, make your solution algorithm much quicker. Graphs are a great way of solving a problem because they allow you to remove trial and error from your problem. Trial and error will only give you a solution to the single case you're looking at. But if you change the amount of liquid in your jugs or change the number of jugs you're using, your solution is worthless. Whereas graphs allow you to solve the problem when you, and you can vary all those things without worry. Importantly, this is much more than just about that question. This uh, particular problem deals with trilinear coordinates. And you can actually use trilinear coordinates in computer graphics. When you're dealing with uh, computer games, for instance, uh, a curved surface isn't actually curved. The surface is made up of small, small, tiny little triangles. And the more triangles you have, the smoother the surface will look. But what's more is you need to shade those triangles correctly, because otherwise the surface will again look blocky. This is a type of shading known as garage shading. If you just make your triangles flat coloured, in that you give your triangle one colouring, then it, again, your, it doesn't matter how many triangles you have, it will still look blocky. If, however, you make your triangle shaded uh, and have a gradient, then it will look a lot smoother. And by using these trilinear coordinates, it makes that shading much easier. We were very thirsty. And we've forgotten you can only take 100 millilitres of uh, water on the plane which posed a problem for us because we had no way of measuring out water whatsoever. Or did we? Thomas had this great idea. He'd bought a bottle containing 125 millilitres of water. Dan, who you'll remember from the first slide came with us, had bought a 75 millilitre water, a bottle of water. We also had a tap. So Thomas said, why don't we empty our bottles We'll go over to the tap and we'll measure out 100 millilitres of water using just these two things. And I said, well, well, how do we do that? And Thomas said, well, can you edit that bit out? <laughs> Thomas said, well, here's our 125 millilitre bottle and here's our 75 millilitre bottle. We could fill the 125 millilitre bottle or we could fill the 75 millilitre bottle. Or we could empty the big bowl, or empty the small bowl. And I said, wait Thomas, there's one more thing we can do. And that is, we can pour water from the 125 milliliter bowl into the smaller bowl. Like so. So how much would that leave in here? 50. 50, exactly. And how much is in here? No, that, that one got you, I was just testing you. Right, so that's the thing, there are our moves. We can fill, empty, and we can transfer, but only that. And the question is, can we measure out 100 millilitres of water? What we did is we, we, we're mathematicians, um, and we, we hate just, just potting about, just trying stuff. It's called trial and error. We hate it. Mainly because it's a lot of work. We're very lazy as mathematicians. Very, mathematicians are very, very We hate lazy. doing work. And so we did this. We came up with a graph. It was a very Genius. special graph. Nobel Prize for yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Thomas. <laughs> it's a very special graph. It's not that special, actually, but here's what it is. Along the right hand, along the x-axis, we're plotting how much water is in the large bowl, the 125 milliliter bowl. Up the y-axis, we're plotting how much water is in the 75 milliliter bowl. So now we've got something to work with. Now what we need to do is identify what we can do. What moves are we allowed to make? Well, as I said before, we could fill either bottle. So filling the 125 milliliter bottle is going all from here all the way to the other side, or indeed from anywhere that you start with. But we're starting with zero, so fill takes you all the way to the end. And same with the 75 milliliter bottle. Filling that takes you all the way to the top. 
That's not all we can do, like Again, I said. Again, you can't fill to the 50, you can't fill to the 75. It always just takes you right to the end. But like I said, that's not all we can do. We can transfer. So we've got going all the way to the end, that's filling. Incidentally, we could do that in reverse and empty and go all the way back to zero. But we could fill, and then once we've got some number here, we can pour it into the other. And that equates to going diagonally. So here, we add 225, and we filled into the 75. Then we go all the way up to the top there. And then that leaves 50 in the 125 milliliter bowl. Uh, uh, and 75 in the smaller bowl there. So now we've got where we start. We're starting at 0, 0. We need to work out where we're going to end, which is any of these two stars here. So that's either 100 in the 125 milliliter bowl, uh, with 75 milliliters in the 75 milliliter bowl, or 125 with zero in the smaller bowl. Now, why can't we have, if we've got 100 milliliters, we have to have it in the 125 milliliter bowl. And why is that? No space in the other. No space in the other. 100, uh, 100 is bigger than 75. So if now we've got. Nothing else. Take that away. <laughs> you can apply that to other stuff as well. But <laughs> anyway, so we're starting at zero, zero. We're finishing at one of these two stars, and we know what moves we can make. So now we don't have to think anymore. We just sort of start there, bounce around, using all, any moves that we can make, and eventually we hit one of those stars. Now this is how you would solve the puzzle. It's how we did it. You solve it by filling the 125 milliliter bottle first. Now what you did is fill the 75 milliliter bottle first. Now that's still, uh, and you can still do it that way, it just means you make some different movements along the way, but it's the same principle. You're just bouncing around, bouncing around the edges, and in the end, you get to the star. So we solved that problem. Uh, unfortunately, we then had another problem, which was Dan had some medicine. As we've mentioned before, Thomas and myself have wonderful beards. Dan really, really wants this beard. He really wants a beard, but he can't grow one, unfortunately. And so the doctor's given him some medicine in the hope that he can take that, and one day he'll have such a fine, wonderful beard as myself and Thomas. But here was the problem now. We needed to measure out 100 milliliters of Dan's medicine from his 200 milliliter bottle of medicine. But we can't do what we did before. We don't want to pour away Dan's medicine. That's precious, that stuff. So we can either, we, now all we can do is transfer it between these three bottles. No pouring, just transferring. And we need to measure out 100 milliliters. Can you do it? And the way we did that was we took our graph idea from before. Now, as we, as we discussed, there's a problem with the two-dimensional graph that we used before, because we can only that's for plotting two balls. And now we've got three. So we could do what some of you suggested and plot it on a three-dimensional graph. But we only had some paper, so we had to do a two-dimensional graph. So we had to find some way of doing it on a two-dimensional graph. Now, it took us some time to come up with and even longer to understand, but we came up with this. This is what's called a trinary coordinate system. And you measure things like this. So we've got the three bottles uh, you know, on each uh, axis. So this is a 75 milliliter bottle. And the way we measure how much liquid is in there is by the line parallel to it. So everything on this line here has uh, 25 in the 75 milliliter bowl. So we're, we're logging the coordinates like this. So uh, with uh, a triple, the first of which being how much water is in the 200 milliliter bowl, second, how much is in the 125 milliliter bowl, third, how much is in the 75 milliliter bowl. And then we can plot that by the line parallel. So to give you an example, this one here. Does anyone know what that is? We, we'll, we'll, right, we'll explain this. We'll explain we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll work. So, each of these degradations is 25 milliliters. 
So let's find out how much is in the 200 milliliter bowl, because that's our first coordinate. So that's 25, because it's on this line here. There's 25 in the 200 milliliter bowl. So a, this has 100 in the 125 milliliter bowl. So how much is in the 75 milliliter bowl, if we're at this point here? 25, 50, 75. So that point is 25, 100, 75. Let's try another one. How about this one? How about you tell me how much is in this one now? Anyone, wanna, anyone volunteer? <laughs> <laughs> Always helps to turn your head sideways. <laughs> so how much in the... There's none in the 75, because it's right on the axis there. So, 25, 50, 75? Yeah, which means Okay, so you just subtracted from 200, didn't you? Yeah. So, so you could also just do 25, 50, 75, 100, 125. So that's a nice little point to notice. Because we've got 200 millilitres of liquid in total, and we're never getting rid of any, all our coordinates will all add up to 200. So that's 25, 75, plus 100, that's 200, 0, 200, 0 is uh, this point at the end, and that's, uh, th that's 200, uh, as is each of the other corners. And this one here, 125, 75, 0, you'll notice they add up to 200. Uh, let's do another one for you. One last one, I think. Oh, OK. In case you, uh, I'm not going to give you the time to work that one out because of my skills with the pointer, but this one over there, that's 50. 25, 125. Hopefully you can see what that is. There's a problem with this graph as it is at the moment. And it's a similar problem to what we've seen before, but can anyone tell me what it is? Why can't some of these stars... Why can't we have that last point? So this, would, this equates to having 25, 50, 75, 100, 125 millilitres of liquid in the 75 milliliter bowl, which we can't have, like before that we saw with the two-dimensional graph. So let's identify the region that we can work with, and that's this one here. So this, so this is maximum of this in this bottle is 75, maximum in this bottle is 125, maximum in this bottle is 200. So again, now we have our graph and we have the region we're working with. So we just need to work out what moves we can make where we start and where we finish. So we're looking for one of these three points here. So we've identified where we're finishing. We know where we're going to start, which is having 200 milliliters in the 200 milliliter bowl. And again, uh, these are the moves we can make. We can fill and we can transfer, which is going along diagonally. And now we're just bouncing around the graph until we get to the start. I believe this is how you did it, but I'm not sure. Uh, but this certainly is six, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's how we did it. Just bounce around until we hit our uh, end point.